Today's topic, the dirty little secret about finding your passion. Hi, I'm Doug Holt with author of Your Own Story, and this is your Daily Growth Hack, where each day we give you a tip, trick, or insight to help you up-level what we call the five to thrive. That is your mind, your body, your soul, your relationships, and your business. So recently, I've been getting a lot of direct messages on Instagram from young hustlers, and that's how they're self-describing themselves. And oftentimes, there's a theme. And in these particular string of messages, and there's three to be exact, they're asking me, Doug, you know, how do I go about finding my passion? I want to make the world a better place. I want to go out and make changes and I really want to go after it. What's the first step? What do you recommend? And it's interesting when I get asked this question of how do I find my passion? And I think what people are, you know, envisioning is kind of almost like a monk or somebody sitting in a cave meditating for for weeks on end. And I've done Vipassana meditation, which is a 10-day silent uh, meditation retreat, although it seems like 12. But anyway, uh, you know, and I've done these different things. I've gone to the jungles in Colombia uh, and been with the, the native tribes and done Yahe. Uh, I've done all kinds of stuff. And I can and I can tell you as somebody who's found their passion that it doesn't come from the meditation. And that's not why I did it, really. I did it because that was my spiritual quest of just peeling back the onions, of, uh, the layers, <laughs> onions, the layers of my own life. And so what I'm gonna tell you is what I told them, and this is really for them as well, but it's also for you know that 50, 60 year old that has reached out to me asking about how do they find their passion you know, in this next stage of their life. And the truth about it is it doesn't involve meditation, although I recommend it um, and it can certainly help. Really what finding your passion about is just doing the things you like, doing the things you enjoy. And as you're doing the things that you really love and enjoy, your passion kind of finds you. Um, and and that, how that works, I know it sounds weird, but as you're doing the things that you really love to do, you're doing those little things that uh, th that you enjoy so much you, you just, you get filled up with energy and it becomes infectious, right? I love coaching. I love helping people. I love teaching. It's just what I love to do. I also love to learn. So I learn something and then I take that, whatever that new knowledge is, and I scramble it up and I repackage it in a way that people can understand it. It's palpable. That's what my goal is. And it's just something I've always been good at. And so the more I do it, the more energy I get, right? So I go into a coaching call uh, and maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and it could get really emotional. Um, things could come up for the, the business owner that I'm working with via video. And by the end of that coaching call, I have more energy than even when I started. And the reason is, is that just something I love to do. And so that's my passion. And I found it because out of just constantly doing what I really liked to do and I love to help people. And so for other people finding their passion, it's like, what do you like to do? Do you like to be around people? Do you really prefer to do things yourself? And start narrowing that down and start putting yourself in a position where you're doing more of the things that you love and enjoy and are doing less of the things you don't. Now, I know it sounds simple, but I bet if you look at your calendar and you say, hey, Doug, here's my calendar from last week, and we went down that calendar, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, et cetera, my guess is you're spending a lot more time, if you're like most people that I work with and, and the way that I used to be, you're spending a lot more time in the zone or in the areas of doing things that you don't like to do, things that don't fill you up. Now, I'm not saying that you just go out and just, just do things that, that make you happy and ignore the rest of your responsibilities. I'm not saying that at all, so don't use me as your excuse. But what I am saying is plan your weeks ahead, your days, your times, and allow yourself to fill that up. Now, if you're a business owner, and we have a ton of business owners and entrepreneurs that uh, watch or listen to these daily growth hacks, this means focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. For... <laughs> decades, it seems like, I was so focused on bettering those areas I wasn't really good at, right? So I would take areas that I wasn't strong in. I'm not a very detail-oriented person for per se, so I would spend so much time going through David Allen's book on organization, and I hired professional organizers. Uh, in fact, I had a girlfriend for hire one for me to come into my office and help me clean up and get things, my organized chaos. Um, but that's not me, right? That just, every time I would go through and start organizing files and stuff like that, it would be like drudgery. But when I would get in my zone of deep genius, when I get in front of somebody and share my gifts, share my knowledge, share, and really just try to help them, whether I was making money or not making money, I was just on fire. I was filled up um, and I absolutely loved it. 
And the more I focused on getting better at that, getting better at that skill set. So coaching. So for me, it was learning, you know, neurolinguistic programming. How can I communicate to someone that allows it to land on them and make sense to them by using analogies and, and things of that nature? I started focusing on my strengths and making them stronger. That's when I had skyrocketed growth. And that's also when I was able to go on that path that I call the author of your own story journey. Right, because I started writing things my way. People would tell me, oh, well, you really should be doing this, Doug. This, 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 and this. And what they were really saying is that was what they saw in them. Like the strengths in them are the things that I should be working on because they maybe they weren't strengths. And we all have weaknesses and strengths, and you can call them whenever you want. I know some people don't like that language, but whatever. I do. And so what you want to do is find your strengths. Find what fills you up. If you love kayaking, like kayaking is your thing, or being outdoors, get outdoors more often. That's going to fill you up. It's going to fill your cup. And we've talked a lot about filling your cup first uh, in, in our daily growth hacks. Look at them, look at the past episodes, and go back there and do the work and make sure you're you're finding those zones that fill your cup. Now, if you just got out of college, maybe, and you're, you're a young hustler like these people are, find out what you're great at. What, feel, what are those things that you do naturally? Your, your friends like it and you just naturally do it. Are you the person always giving advice? Are you the person that loves to organize? Or, you know, if you're the person that loves to organize and you just, you're the detail oriented person and you love checklists, I, I need you, right? I, I, I need you because that's not me. Focus on getting better at that. Focus on systems that work for people like myself, you know? Um, if you're the person that really loves big parties, you love events, you know, you get off work and you need to get out there, whether it be happy hour, whether it be a social event, whatever that fills you up when you're tired, you need to get out around a lot of people, do more of that. That is going to allow you to find your passion. Your passion is going to find you, right? It's going to find you as you do the things that fill you up. And that's the dirty little secret, right? No, nope, not many people talk about it because it's hard to sell a book around that subject, but that's, I've seen it time and time and time again, guys, uh, I get, paid a good amount of money to help people find their passion. And really, that's exactly what I would tell them. And Maybe a little structured, a little bit more structured, but you want to really just spend more time in your zone of genius. And finding your zone of genius really starts with doing the things that you like to do, doing those things that fill you up. And when you do those things that fill you up, you're going to be great at them. People are going to recognize it and they're going to recognize that it's probably something, you know, that they need help in, right? So again, that organized person, if you're that organized person and that's what you really enjoy doing, if you're doing more of that, I'm going to find you or you're going to find me and I might need what you do. And that's how you start building that passion and, and finding out what your purpose is and then allowing your purpose to fill your, your bank account and your soul at the same time. And there's nothing wrong with doing what you love and getting paid for it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. As long as you're doing it with integrity and leading from your heart and really helping people out. That's it for me today. As always, go out, find, find your passion, do what you love, fill your cup, and be the author of your own story. Please go over to authorofyourownstory.com if you haven't already and get on our mailing list. This mailing list allows us to let you know the things that are going on within our company, within Author of Your Own Story, and allows us to better serve you. Plus, when we see the numbers, when we see who's joining, we're able to tailor the message and, and hopefully get out there for more. And of course, like these, these young hustlers did, find me online, and I'd love to hear from you. It really warms my heart um, to be able to help people. I mean, that's what I'm great at, and that's what I do, and that's why I do these daily growth hacks. Uh, you know, it was a commitment I made uh, almost a year ago at this point, and we're here in the in the 200s, well into the 200 episodes. And so I said I was going to do 365 of them, and I want to do that to help you, and I hope you're enjoying them. So let me know how that is for you. That's it for me today. Go out, be the author of your own story. I hope you enjoyed today's daily growth hacks. Please put your comments right down below, and remember to click subscribe. This way we can ensure that we're delivering these daily growth hacks right to you each and every day. On behalf of the whole team here, remember, go out and be the author of your own story.